dive into a drift of powdery snow. Invisible to the world, the ptarmigan roost inside their snow burrows, protected from predators and the extreme cold. Another bird combats the deep freeze. A black-capped chickadee flits from tree to tree, eating his cached food. He must gain enough fat each day to survive the night. But this small bird needs more than food to survive. He fluffs up his dense feathers for better insulation. Tiny muscles control the angle of each feather, while other muscles shiver to produce heat. The chickadee can also lower his temperature and metabolism to save energy. He roosts in a thick forest or in tree cavities that give him the best shelter. While birds roost beneath a full moon, all is not quiet. A wolf howls on a distant ridge as caribou crunch through the snow with their broad hooves. These deer are well insulated for the Arctic by dense fur and hollow guard hairs. They sniff the snow and detect the smell of ashes from an old forest fire. Turning away, the caribou avoid this burned area. Muzzles to the ground, the caribou later detect the mushroom-like scent of lichens. They dig craters and forage on clumps of these rootless plants. Their hooves and thin legs are well adapted for digging. A special liquid fat protects their joints. Blood traveling directly to the hooves helps warm the returning blood to the heart. This circular flow protects the legs and reduces heat loss. While caribou wander, the grizzly bear is snug in her den with two newborn cubs. The drowsy bear nurses them and rests to save energy. The three survive off her large storehouse of fat. As she sleepily feeds her fast-growing cubs, she doesn't notice the faint sound of steps across the snow. Sure-footed and agile, dull sheep pick their way across the mountain slope. Fierce winds have blown snow off the alpine tundra, exposing frozen grasses and sedges. The sheep graze on these withered plants, then seek shelter from the wind by bedding down in the lee of some rocky crags. Month by month, winter passes slowly. Backs to the wind, a group of musk oxen stands on the snow-covered tundra, conserving energy. Short legs, small ears, and fluffy underwool, known as keviat, insulate musk oxen from even the deepest cold. One musk ox sees wolves approaching and senses danger. Immediately, the musk oxen gather together. Shoulder to shoulder, they form a circular wall of thick fur and horns. As one wolf draws near, a large bull lowers his deadly, sharp horns. With a sudden burst, he charges the wolf. Wheeling away, the wolf quickly retreats. The musk oxen continue to work as a team, charging and driving off the hungry wolves. Trickle tinkle drip. The snow and ice begin to melt. As temperatures rise, bumblebees, butterflies, and other dormant insects begin to stir. A woolly bear caterpillar basks in the sun after being snow-covered for eight months. His dark, furry body traps the sun's heat. Inching his way to a budding willow, he chews on a tiny leaf. These fuzzy creatures and other northern insects have antifreeze substances that prevent ice crystals from forming in their bodies. The woolly bear will spend up to 14 winters in the Arctic as a caterpillar. Then this amazing survivor will transform into a moth, but for only one short summer. One by one, moist leaves rustle near the pond. The wood frog slowly thaws out, and its heart beats once again. Ruck, ruck. The frog begins calling for a mate, making a duck-like sound near the pond's edge. 
Slapping their tails in the open water, the beavers dive while the blackfish dart after prey on the pond's bottom. Farther up the valley, the male ground squirrel eats his stored cache of food, then leaves his burrow in search of a mate. Hour by hour, day by day, the pulse of life increases with warmer June days and greening plants. Caribou feast upon a summer buffet, while playful grizzly bear cubs tussle and explore the tundra as their mother searches for prey. Birds that migrated south for the winter return to their birthplace, building nests on the tundra and filling the air with music. For more than two months, the days will be endless, as the top of the world tilts toward the sun and the magical land of the midnight sun explodes with life. About the Author and Illustrator Debbie S. Miller first moved to Alaska to teach in a community of Athabascan people native to the Arctic. Once there, Debbie explored the nearby Arctic National Wildlife Refuge and learned about the environment and its inhabitants. Alaska's wildlife and landscape have inspired many of her award-winning books. She hopes her books help to build an appreciation for the natural environment. John Van Zyl has illustrated nine of Debbie S. Miller's picture books. He lives near Eagle River, Alaska, where he and his wife raise Siberian Huskies. John has participated in the Iditarod sled dog race twice and has created a new poster for the race each year since 1979. In addition to painting dog teams, John paints Alaska's people, landscapes, and wildlife. Author's Purpose In Survival at 40 Below, the author writes about a variety of animals through the course of four seasons. Why do you think she arranged the text in this way?